Hi everyone, welcome to the Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Making Studio. We're gonna make a great project. This is a, a convertible earring. We're using some of the basic supplies you use frequently, uh, uh, fire polished beads, some antique gold plated findings, uh, lever back ear wire, and the fancy part is the convertible part, this lobster claw clasp. By using a lobster claw clasp on the bottom of an earring, you can take off your dangle, maybe go to something simpler or just a charm or whatever you want to make multitudes of earrings out of one idea. Speaking of these great earrings, check out this lever back ear wire. Uh, it's probably one of the most popular ear wires I've sold when I worked in customer service. Look at the selection. There's so many different kinds. We've got Great ones like this almost instant kind that you just glue a rivoli in there and you've got a beautiful sparkly earring. We've got them for cab settings and, and uh, half drilled pearls, all kinds of different lever backs. Check those out next time you're shopping at firemountaingems.com. But our project for now is this, this convertible earring. Very simple, just a lot of loops and, and, and beads to put together. I'll get it started now. Going to start off with a head pin an antique brass head pin. I'm going to put on the bead cap, a bead, another bead cap, and then I'm going to make a simple loop. Lots of ways to make simple loops. I'm just going to show you my way, which is to get my thumbnail right in there so I can make a 90 degree bend on that wire, thusly. Then I'll trim that off. And people are always asking me, how do I know exactly how much to trim off? Well, it's because of years and years of experience. But I'll show you a trick about that. I'm gonna actually cut this one too long. This is a little, little less than half an inch. And that's too long for the loop I wanna make. So I'm going to start making my loop and I usually grip my round nose pliers about the same spot every time, about halfway up. And I'm going to start rolling that back with my round nose pliers. I'm going to reposition my grip, put that into the lower jaw, and roll it back some more. And Oh, look at that. I finished my loop far too early, so that means I've cut that wire too long. No worries. I'll just trim it a little bit now. And if I didn't trim it enough, I'll trim it some more. So don't feel all hung up about how, uh, how exactly how much wire you need to trim off. Um, it, it's best if it's too long because you can always trim a little bit more. And if I have to, I'll move that over, get my room to get my pliers in there. There we go. And put it back together. Ta-da! There we have our bottom drop to start this earring to finish up here. We're going to need three more little smaller fire polish beads on eye pins this time. The eye pin already has a loop on one side. We just need to add the, uh, uh, the loop on the other side. And we want to try and make that loop on the other side look just like that one. Now, admittedly, it doesn't have to be perfect because after all, sometimes a little less than perfect kind of shows even more love because it shows that you made it with your own two hands. And um, to me, that's kind of a real symbol of love that you took the time to make something for somebody else. And I put on a bead cap, my fire polished bead, and another teeny tiny bead cap. I love bead caps too, because to me that's kind of like the frame on a painting. It just makes it just that nicer. Okay, now I'm going to make a loop on this one. Uh, again, for the most professional loop, you want your loop to be in the same orientation as the first loop. So just like the one I did previously, I'm going to put my thumbnail right next to that to make the 90 degree bend. Then I'll trim off the excess wire. This time I'll try and trim off the proper amount. That's a pretty small loop. I want to make it look just like that. And grip the end of that wire with my round nose pliers. Roll it back. Reposition my pliers and put the lower jaw in there and finish rolling back that loop to make a nice little loop. And let's see if it matches the first loop. 
Oh, almost. Look at that. Let's see if I can get it where you can see it. Almost matches, just not quite the right orientation, so I will fix that very quickly with a second pair of chain nose pliers. There we go. Ho, ho, ho. I'm going for the professional look. Okay, we need to make two more of those. Bead cap, small fire polish bead, another bead cap. I love these little bead caps, but sometimes they're so little, it's kind of hard to get on your eye pin. Make the 90 degree bend. Ta-da. Trim that off. Making sure the end of the wire does not go flying into somebody's eyes. Grip it with my round nose pliers. I do want to grip the very end. Roll that back. Reposition my pliers. Roll it back the rest of the way. Voila. Check that it matches the first loop and that it's in the same orientation. Beautiful. One more. A small bead cap. A small bead. Sometimes these holes, all these fire polish beads, have a little bit of what I call flash, a little excess coating on them, and it makes it kind of difficult to put your head pin through there. Don't worry about it. Turn it over on the other end. That end will probably be just fine. And then it works. Another bead cap. And make the 90 degree bend. Put my thumbnail in there. Fold that back. Trim it. Grip it with my round nose pliers. Rolling it back, reposition, roll it back the rest of the way. And then check them to make sure they work. A Little bit of orientation issue. There we go. Now all we need, <laughs> they're slightly magnetic and as are my pliers. <laughs> okay, now all we have to do is attach these all together, and I do it just like I would a jump ring. I will twist open this loop, twisting, not pulling. Put on the next bead, twist it closed, put on the next bead. Twist it closed. Put on the next bead. Twist it closed. And then we can put that onto our binding and twist it closed. All right, so we have completed our first and longest dangle. I pre-made some of these dangles before, so I'm going to attach those now. They're the same kind of dangle, except this one only has two of the small fire polish, and this has one of the small fire polish. And uh, another tip on keeping your jewelry professional, when you're making earrings, I know people who are very, very fussy about having left and right earrings. So if you notice on these earrings I'm working on here, on this one, the longest dangle is on this side. On this one, the longest dangle is on the other side. So you might keep that in mind. You're making mirror images when you're making earrings. And I just opened up the top of that, put it into the center of this finding. This finding is not actually designed for earrings. It was actually designed to be a, a, an end bar for like a three strand necklace. <laughs> but there are no rules. You can put these findings together any way you like. And sometimes they don't like. Come on now. 
is my bead cap is getting in my way. There we go. Once you get it in there, then you twist it closed. Take my last little dangle, twist it open. See if I can keep that bead cap out of my way. Put it into the third hole of this finding and twist it shut. And there's the bottom part of our convertible earring. Now let's do the top part. On this one, I'm going to use the larger fire polish bead, an eye pin, and we'll use some slightly bigger bead caps on this. And by the way, all of these materials we're using will appear in the materials list. You can find it in our gallery of designs at firemountaingems.com. And I believe there will be a link on this video as well, so you can get to it that way. So I've put on a bead cap, the big fire polish, another bead cap. Make that 90 degree bend. Trim off the excess. We're getting near the end of this video, so I hope somewhere along the line you've remembered to like and subscribe so you can get other similar videos when we create them and you'll be good to go. And that lets us know that you like us. Just want to make that loop good. And I like my loops to be parallel. So this one's a little crooked. There we go. Now they're the same orientation, although one's a little bigger than the other. Eh, I'll leave the big one on the bottom because I want to put my lobster claw on the bottom. This is a great little swivel type lobster claw, so your earrings can sway and dangle and swivel, especially when you're out dancing. And the ear wire on the top. Again, I'm using those neat lever back ear wires. These are so nice because they're very secure. Once you put them through your ear hole and closed it up, you're unlikely to lose those earrings. I really like them. Put that on there. Close it up. And there is the top part of our earring. Now all we have to do is make the top part friends with the bottom part. And we have a pair of fabulous convertible earrings. Hope you enjoyed this project. Make something like it for yourself with your own creativity and have fun. Thanks for joining me. Happy beating. <laughs>